Today we're going to be talking to a person who has worked with a number of non-farm businesses in helping them with their transition. So you've worked in the agricultural industry in various capacities for a really long time. Yeah. From what you understand from a family farm perspective, more to the corporate perspective in terms of you know other agri-food, agri-business that you've been associated with. Can you draw some connections for me? I can draw a lot of connections. So tell me more. There's a lot of best practice that can apply to a large multinational corporation and a small family-run operation. Uh, good communication skills, um, having a vision, sharing that vision, understanding what you need to make that uh, vision realized, uh, bringing the right people in to help you execute on that strategy and, and achieving that vision, um, thinking about your own interests, own ambitions, uh, being honest and open about that. All those things apply, whether it's a, a billion dollar enterprise or a, or a smaller operation in uh, Southern Ontario or middle of Saskatchewan. If one thinks, well, you know, this really doesn't apply to me, well, yeah, it does, because these big companies, they, they apply the same type of principles. They're thinking long-term, who, who's gonna be here to help uh, run these businesses? Who's gonna be a leader? Uh, what talent do we need to bring in? Are we being honest with each other about our expectations, what our interests are? Are we communicating that? If you're looking at a family business transition versus a non-family business transition, what are the key differences that you see? I, I think in a uh, more family-oriented transition, what I've experienced, uh, a broader, network of stakeholders, so broader network of relations who may have an interest in the business uh, or who may not. Um, so I would say there's a lot more consultation and discussion and allowing the, the family members to really explore different options and make sure everyone's comfortable with where they're, they're going. When should they be part of the conversation in your experience? So earlier is always better. Uh, just to have the discussion, get to know people, understand what their interests are, um, outline for them what's involved if they do want to become a part of the company. It's not like a day job where you can flip the switch and know I've, I've had enough, I'm going to walk out. It doesn't work that way. And, and admittedly, a, a, you know, a family-run business is very different than a big corporation because you're working and living with those people day in, day out. So, you know, there are some uh, pretty significant differences and that's where communication may not be as, as easy and there may be some barriers. Um, some history, some different interests that uh, make that communication more challenging. You told me that you have stories. What have you seen that really struck a chord that's worth sharing? I, I've seen some, some just fabulous uh, transition planning, su succession planning with individuals who were very progressive, you know, thinking already in their early to mid 40s, you know, where I want to be, who do I need to bring in, how can I bring them in soon, how can they help grow the business, like just best in class uh, examples. On the other end, I've seen it where it's been a little more challenging where the owners or key, uh, key shareholders have decided one day, I, I wanna retire, I'm ready to retire, but where do I go? Mm. And so that creates a little more of a challenge if there's not a good uh, pipeline of talent, if there's not people in the company already to take on that uh, leadership role or that, that ownership stake and it hasn't been constructed, thought about, planned, or even uh, even discussed. Any other specific stories that you had in mind? Illustrations of like, oh wow, that's a best practice, like we really gotta reinforce that. I, I find documenting your plans, your ideas is also really helpful. Yeah. Like to actually put it in black and white, here's what we want to achieve. People hear, th hear a lot of different things and they interpret different things, so I find it really, really helpful. Put it in black and white on a piece of paper, here's what it, I think we want to do, or what I want to do with this company, everyone aligned with that. Well, and very much so, they're like, wait a minute, that's not what we said, right? Then you can actually work with yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Then you can open up the discussion and, well, what did you mean? What did you understand? Mm -hmm. So I, that's where documenting, they're a very helpful tool. I think there's a lot of really good points you've made today, and so thank you for taking the time to share them with us. You don't have to think about your business being so different as a farm. There's more in common, and those best practices, they might not be your habit today, but we really want to encourage you to start adopting them so you can reach that vision that everybody is aiming for.